All right, it is the top of the hour, so let's get started. All right, so um, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you're joining us uh, in the world from. Uh, thank you uh, for being here. Uh, this is the Telerik R3 2020 release webinar, and we have a lot to unpack uh, today. We are talking reporting, testing, and productivity. So let's uh, get started. So uh, today, um, you're going to see three of us uh, doing the webinar here. Uh, we have Andrew Wieland, uh, Peter Grigorov. Andrew uh, is in Boston. Peter is in uh, Sofia, Bulgaria, and I'm in Pennsylvania. I'm Sam Basu. So we are on screen um, through the magic of technology, which sometimes fails us, but uh, for the most part, we are good. So once again, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this should be a very uh, fun hour where we talk through some uh, reporting, testing, and productivity things uh, to keep your developers happy, to keep your enterprise workflows going. Okay, so let's dive in. One more time, welcome to Webinar Week. If this is the first time you're joining us uh, throughout the week, uh, a very big welcome. If you are already using Teleric or Candy UI, um, thank you for your patronage. Or if you're new to the family, Welcome on board. Uh, hopefully we can show you all the different things we do uh, to make developers uh, more successful. Now, we have been at this uh, throughout the whole week, uh, essentially. We started back on Monday and uh, each day we are tackling each uh, technology vertical. This may be like one of the smallest uh, kind of upside of being uh, or living through a global pandemic. We are all remote and we are uh, spending more time talking through the things that matter. Uh, so we talked about all things web uh, with .NET and Blazor that was on Monday. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, we spent time with All Out Kindy UI, uh, which is our JavaScript and front end facing libraries for React and Vue and Angular and jQuery. Uh, I came back on yesterday and we talked about all things mobile with Xamarin, uh, WPF, uh, WinForms, WinUI, you name it. It was a lot of fun. And then today uh, we talked about reporting, productivity, and testing. Uh, lots of uh, love for .NET developers. I think you're going to see uh, we uh, do a lot for JavaScript developers as well. These are tools that apply to everybody. And uh, every release, like we uh, stand on the shoulder of giants, our engineering teams, our PMs, they pour in so much love. And when we try um, doing these webinars all together, we tend to uh, kind of have to like speed through some of these things. So I'm so happy that we are taking the time to talk about reporting and productivity and testing separately. So you're going to see us kind of maybe set the stage since maybe some of you may be uh, seeing these things for the first time. So we are super excited. We put in a lot of love and care in these products. So hopefully you can see uh, what we have in store for you. So every day of this week, we have been at this and trying to bring you the most uh, uh, features and um, kind of coverage of uh, what we put in in this release. So 11 to 12 p.m. Eastern, I'm on East Coast time. I think so is Andy. Uh, Peter is in Europe time. Um, but um, for me, the hours are this one hour of live webinar where we talk about the product updates and what exactly went into each release. We listen to you. We plan our roadmaps accordingly. And then we take a half an hour break. Uh, me and Andy will go uh, grab some quick lunch. And then you come and join us back at on Twitch. That's where we get to relax a little bit more. Uh, we don't have to speed through uh, things uh, as much. And you will actually see us use the bits live, um, like live coding, actually running some unit tests, running some, uh, some testing. So deep dives and lots of interactivity. That's coming up for you on Twitch uh, right here this afternoon as well for us. All right, so again, like I said, this is your time. You're spending an hour of your day, a precious hour with us. So we thank you for that. Uh, so this is your opportunity to make use of it. Although you see only the three of us on screen, there is a small army of folks who support us every release and every webinar. So you actually have the team leads and the engineers who build these products uh, for reporting, testing, just mock, uh, all on the call. Right, so ask away questions. This is your time. There's a Q&A panel um, in the uh, webinar window itself. So you can ask away and we will try to answer as many questions as we can. If you are on uh, uh, social media, on public, uh, and if you want to leave a breadcrumb so we can get back to you, use the hashtag uh, hey Or if you just want to comment on how things are going, if you're excited, let us know. Um, if for some reason you have to run or something happens uh, where you have to deal with other things, uh, don't worry, we are recording this in high def. And uh, we will push this out to YouTube as uh, soon as we can. So, um, yeah, we are super excited with R3 and all the things that it brings. But before we go into R3 and all of these products, I do want to mention, and again, some of you um, uh, who have joined us, if, if there's anyone who has joined us for every one of uh, 
the days this week. You are an absolute hero to us. So please let us know in the chat that if you, you have joined every one of those days. Uh, but uh, the, the goal is like a lot of you have uh, products like generic DevCraft, which is a big bundle has like uh, two dozen or so things in it. You may not always realize that you have uh, those products available. So that's why it makes sense to kind of uh, look around at the other things. And especially if you have workflows uh, that demand reporting and testing solutions, these are absolutely things you should uh, look at. So we are glad to bring you this hour today. Uh, but again, like I said, uh, before we move on, we put together a very big conference, a tech conference, a social community conference every year. Uh, right around October, and we do this in Sofia, Bulgaria, which is our uh, engineering headquarters. We can't unfortunately do that in person this year, but it does not mean that we can't have more fun, in fact. So we are actually doing DevReach throughout the whole week, kind of the same idea that we're doing in the webinars here. So all throughout the week, you're going to see lots and lots of tech, lots of love, lots of experts, and it's all live and it's all free for you to attend. And uh, this is kind of the schedule. So each day we're going to break things down per tech and uh, you're going to see uh, at least uh, a dozen or so guests join us each day uh, to kind of break you, uh, break down like what's latest and happening in Blazor, in React, in, in .NET MAUI, in Angular. And then Friday we kind of end things with a code party, lots and lots of prizes. And it's all interactive, it's all free. Uh, just head over to twitch.tv forward slash coded live. Um, you can watch it if, if you want and just you need to sign in if you need to just uh, comment uh, and, and be with us in chat. So we are really hoping you come and join us uh, for DevRich this year. Okay, let's talk about R3, all right? And this is a big, big release for us um, this year. Um, a lot of things uh, in software engineering industry, like I think we are fortunate to be able to work remote as well as we do. Uh, a lot of things are um, easy, remote, uh, but a lot of things are hard, especially engineering, especially product teams that collaborate constantly. Uh, so it, it uh, brings me a lot of joy to see that our engineering team, teams don't even miss a beat and they're over delivering. So there's a lot going on in this release. Uh, so if you care about particular products and want to see what's going on, with Kendo UI uh, or artillery bits, uh, head over to blogs.artillery.com. Each team takes the time to write up a long post on exactly what is changing uh, in this release. So all of it is up there. Okay, and everything that we talk about today with reporting, with, uh, with testing, with uh, productivity, uh, all of those things are new. Uh, so however you get your um, Telerik or Kendo UI or other tools into your workflows, Go ahead and get that because otherwise you're not going to see it light up. So you could uh, just be on Telerik.com, sign in, get the DLLs. Uh, control panel is something a lot of you use, or if you just want to pull in NuGet packages through NPM or NuGet, um, uh, however you do it, go get the hot bits. That's what uh, is going to light up the things you uh, see us talk through. One more time, we are a company by developers, for developers, and we want to see you be successful and not struggle through using our stuff. So we put a lot of love and care every release with our docs we dog food our stuff we build things uh, we build demos that we push out uh, to the stores uh, try to make it as easy as it gets for you to play around with our stuff before you even install anything or try anything out right and if you see features that you would like to see in your uh, products that you're using uh, talk to us at feedback.telerik.com uh, tell us what you would like to see and our pms and we all read everything that comes uh, comes through so that's a little bit as to what we do to make you successful. All right, now let's dive into reporting. I'm gonna maybe spend the next 20 minutes on reporting and then we can switch gears and Andy and Peter are, are gonna walk you through um, the rest of testing. So I will try to cover reporting and a little bit of productivity in these 20 minutes. Uh, so it's quite a bit, uh, let me go a little fast, but like I said, uh, some of the more involved demos where we live code, come and join us for Twitch. That's a little more relaxed where we can have more time to show you all the pieces. So let's talk about reporting. And since again, we don't um, give enough time sometimes to these products, uh, let's kind of start with the basics. We have a lot of data in this world, in the way we live, uh, all of us are remote and virtual. Every one of us is generating lots and lots of data for enterprises, for anybody to make decisions on the data, you need to parse through the data. It's, it's just too much, right? So you need something that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that shows you what the data means, the patterns, the correlations in your data. So you get to see the trends, you get to understand uh, what data is. This is the crux of data mining, but the basics of it is seeing the trends, seeing the correlations in your data. Uh, otherwise we are taking decisions blindly, right? So 
data visualization really helps. Uh, this is what lets you your data come alive and shows you the things that you want to see before you make your decisions. So reporting matters. Reporting absolutely matters, and the right tools really help. Uh, a couple of uh, generic things about reporting. Um, data visualization obviously is the key to decision making, to storytelling, right? That's how you understand your data. And when you talk about uh, workflows where you are uh, pushing things out uh, to your enterprise, like C-level folks, or anything that you make, make decisions on, you need reporting. Reporting is the crux to see how things are going every day or over a week or over a year. That's how you know, otherwise you are, you're blind. And um, we stand on top of some amazing tech today, be it uh, web or desktop or mobile, you name it, and lots and lots of help in terms of data visualizations. So use these things to your advantage uh, to understand your data a little better. Reporting solutions, there are many, and you can try doing some of it on your own, but there are, these are the six Ps that uh, we wrote up an ebook, and this was something that really stuck with me. It needs to be something that is intuitive. It needs to be something that is easy for you to hook up to whatever data sources you have in your enterprise. It could be huge servers, could be under your desk, could be in the public cloud, doesn't matter. You need to be able to reach your data and be able to produce uh, reports efficiently that are fast and that are easy for you to deliver uh, to your end users. You need to be able to support multiple platforms because that's what people demand in, in this day and age. And again, you can try doing some of it on your own. Reporting is very tricky business to get all the charts and graphs and delivery and com composition of the reports going, it is difficult, right? So that's where you see reporting solutions. And I think uh, what we would like to see is our show is the way our reporting solution helps you with every one of these things. So the price and, and the benefits really need to come together for you. With that, let's talk about our reporting solution. This is uh, a beloved solution to many of us, uh, has been around for a long, long time, really matured solution at this point. This is .NET reporting for everything that you can think of. Now, when you talk about uh, reporting, there are really like three or four pillars to reporting. First up is your data, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So first is you need to get to your data sources, right? So, and that, like I said, could be anything. Could be uh, relational. Could be any other business objects, CSVs, um, Open Edge, uh, Open Access. You name it. So you need to be able to get to your data easily, and then you need to be able to build your and design your report. And that's important. And this is where we give you like three different report designers. There is one that's integrated inside of Visual Studio. There is one that is standalone. And then there's one that is web-based, which is completely done in a browser. Your, your users will be able to design their own reports, which is fantastic. So all of that is there and all of the ammunition that you need to build those polished reports, that's all there for you as well. And visualizing those reports, that's delivery. Again, you need to be able to serve it up on whatever platform your users on. That's the delivery part of it. And then exporting your reports out again, you want flexibility in whatever format you want to export your reports out. So all of that is built in with uh, Telerik reporting. When it comes to the visual components that you want to put in your reports, um, you're not going to find anything lacking here. We have been at this for a long time. So think about any type of bars and charts and graphs and data visualization elements, maps and barcodes. We have it all and it's all included for you. So you can build your reports exactly how you want. Let's talk about report server. This is um, something that uses reporting, but this is a turnkey solution. So it's one thing to be able to build reports, but it's a whole other thing when you talk about report management, right? So compared to reporting, which is what lets you build your reports and, and serve them up, uh, report server serves a different need for enterprises. Maybe you, you don't want to do this all by hand. It's, it's cumbersome and it takes a lot of effort. So compared to reporting, you're going to see a few more pillars here. There is storage. How do you store your reports and how do you serve them up? How do you access them from just about every uh, device that people are using? And then how do you manage those reports? How do you uh, schedule those reports? How do you um, uh, have a versioning of those reports as people are going through? And you need to be able to deliver, deliver them uh, through um, Active Directory or whatever is the authentication. Okay, so again, the export, the build, the visualize stay the same, but it's about the storing and management of reports. Um, that's, that's where, uh, the magic lies, okay? So that's report server. Uh, so the point of reporting and report server is again, to give you all the bits that you need to build your reports with .NET and deliver it on any platform and report server lets you store and manage 
and automate some of those workflows with, with reporting. So let's take a look at what's new. We have been again pouring in a lot of love uh, for Telerik reporting. This started like a few releases back and we have been at this for quite some time now. We have an absolute beautiful web report designer. We have had two desktop designers, which is Visual Studio and the standalone one, which I'll show you. Uh, but doing WYSIWYG report authoring on the web is not for the faint hearted. It takes a lot of work to bring in all of those elements and give you, giving you a toolbox, giving you a data source that you can pull your data from. And again, giving you all of the elements, like your graphs and charts and maps to be able to do all of that in a declarative fashion. So your end users are able to design their own reports. That takes a lot of work and that's where we have been uh, pouring in a lot of love. So with the web report designer, you see more and more updates uh, come across every release. Uh, so we are bringing it almost at parity. So the web, should be able to do exactly what the desktop does. And uh, we are we're closing that gap every release. So a lot of performance tuning went in uh, to make sure things are much, much faster, much better UX when you're uh, designing those reports. Uh, when it comes to those data sources, again, we have quite a few, but if you, we had SQL type things, but if you wanted to reach out to a web service or uh, a JSON feed or a CSV file, um, we give you data source wizards. So when you add things, we kind of walk you through a wizard on exactly how you get the data source set up, and then you are off uh, on your own to build your own report. Uh, we also added a little uh, reset functionality, but the reset functionality is for you to inspect those um, parameters, those things that are uh, volatile in your report. Those could be set dynamically, or maybe you explicitly set them. You can reset them out when you are designing your reports and then also when you're delivering them. So again, like I said, lots and lots of effort and love being poured into the report designer to make it work exactly for you. And I'll show you a quick demo of this in just a minute. All right, so that's uh, with the web report designer and we have report viewers for just about everything. Blazor is really hot and everybody talks about it. So I'm, I'm pulling this out, but you can also do this for, for Angular, for uh, Vue and other SPA frameworks. It's essentially an HTML5 based web viewer and then we can wrap it up for different platforms. And again, you get full flexibility, you get uh, to access parts of it through, through Razor syntax and you get all the flexibility to render a report within your Blazor or your Angular or your Vue application, right? So the report viewers are fantastic. The, the desktop obviously works with WPF and WinForms, but delivering high fidelity reports on the web, um, that is uh, really quite amazing. Let's talk about uh, some more things we did with, uh, with reporting. Uh, as you saw uh, with me covering WPF, we have a brand new theme, which is our Office 2019 theme. It is absolutely beautiful for modern um, apps that look just like our, they're inspired by the Office 2019 themes. And there are three color palettes that you can choose from, light, uh, dark, and gray. So you can give your WPF apps a fresh new look and uh, you can render all your reports within WPF. If you are using any images, uh, which again, almost every report ends up using those things in the picture boxes. We do have vector image support, so SVG support, uh, and we preserve the markup in whatever uh, TRDP is the Telerik report definition uh, or some other versions of that, we preserve their markup. So we can, uh, no matter how much the user zooms, we can maintain that high fidelity rendering. And we also preserve the vector outputs in whatever things you export out to like HTML5 or DOCX or XLSS. So this is, this is nice when it comes to maintaining the quality of your reports that you're building. Um, when you talk about reporting, um, again, there are multiple clients, but the crux of what the reporting engine does is often on the service side. And we have a RESTful endpoint that we expose on top of it. So it can grab your data and it knows how to render your report and send it off to the clients. And that REST service is key to a lot of things, um, providing the report designer, providing you with those report viewers. Uh, you can actually now do a cancellation of the reports right from the REST service itself. So if a web client says, uh, I, I don't want something, you can make that request to the REST service and can go ahead and stop that rendering. And like I said, performance optimizations everywhere. Uh, in terms of creating multiple pages in your report. Again, reports are made of lots and lots of pages. So we can do a lot more things parallel. We are a lot more careful as to how we manage the memory footprint of images that we use in our reports. So what I'm trying to say is there is a lot of love. Their uh, reporting is a fantastic solution to serve your enterprise needs. So take a look. 
Um, and I will show you demos, but uh, give, me, um, give me another five minutes. I'm going to walk you through some more slides, and then we'll uh, take a quick look at reporting. And like I said, come and join me on, um, on Twitch. I will actually build the REST service and uh, like a report designer live, so you can see how, I, uh, how we do it. Um, and by I, I mean all of the engineering teams that have provided us with all the tools to build such amazing stuff. Let's talk about developer productivity. This is important for every developer, no matter what you're building, uh, what application stack, what platforms you're building, uh, this stuff matters to everybody, right? We all want to be more productive and the right tools absolutely help. So let's talk about Fiddler, our beloved Fiddler. And uh, this is where I'm going to say that we're not going to do justice to this because we have poured in a tremendous amount of love into this in the last six months. And we have had like several standalone webinars. This almost takes easily an hour or more to kind of walk you through some of the new features. I just want to mention some of the things we have done. And this is Fiddler is something that is loved by hundreds and thousands of developers all across the world. So this is where we started. This is what was called Fiddler on Windows. It's still uh, out there. It's called Fiddler Classic. And you see kind of how the UI evolved a little bit over, over the years. It's still out there. But again, we are living in 2020. We need access to this everywhere we are. So welcome to Fiddler Everywhere. Uh, this actually has been in the work for a long, long time. Uh, it takes a lot of engineering to pull off what we are doing here with Fiddler, and that is to make it work absolutely everywhere. And uh, just as of probably two weeks back, uh, we have a general availability of Fiddler Everywhere 1.0. So go ahead and give this a spin. I think you're gonna be amazed with what you see. This is Fiddler literally everywhere. So um, when you talk about the network stack, developers should never be in doubt as to what's happening. Um, when you're building web applications, maybe you have some help with, uh, with dev tools, uh, but the moment you start talking about reporting solutions or desktop or mobile, you're completely in the dark, right? So this is where Fiddler helps. It really is a low level network proxy that works everywhere. So Fiddler everywhere is for Windows, it's for Mac and it's for Linux, right? So go ahead and use it however you want. And some of the things that Fiddler lights up are really, I mean, there is no comparison or there is no, nothing even close to uh, what Fiddler does out of the box for you. So like I said, the UI is completely refreshed uh, when it comes to how we compose our requests and how the autoresponder works. Let's talk about a little bit more about some of the features, right? So this is where Fiddler really, really shines. Yes, it's web debugging. It lets you see what's going across. But some of the key things are request and response auto-responding, right? So Fiddler is a proxy, so every request goes through it in and out, right? So you get to record those requests, and let's say you are integrating with the service, you can turn the service and your network completely off, and Fiddler can auto-respond to your requests, which is fabulous. You get to look into HTTPS traffic, given some certificates that you have to install and set up, you get to look through HTTPS traffic. And then for the first time, we are really opening up Fiddler for Teams. So you don't have to share the things that Fiddler sees with a screenshot or an email. We are uh, kind of enabling cloud workflows and collaboration uh, through Fiddler. So we are very excited. And again, like I said, we're not doing justice here to Fiddler. You're going to watch us talk a lot more about Fiddler and pour a lot more love into it. Okay, I got seven more minutes before I hand it over to Peter and Andy here. Let's talk about JustMock. This is super um, exciting because, again, as we see things with .NET, we have seen .NET Framework, we have seen .NET Core, and now we are heading into .NET 5. It is important to unit test, right? Without unit tests, as we push out uh, product updates, we are in the blind. We don't know what we are breaking, right? So you have to write unit tests and you have to be using a mocking framework. Otherwise, you have to do a lot of this by hand and you don't want to do that. So JustMock is probably the most fastest, the most fluid and flexible mocking solution that I have come across. Uh, it is for unit tests for all things .NET. And um, it absolutely works with the latest and greatest. So we have had support for .NET Core uh, for several uh, years now. But .NET 5 is just around the corner. And, and we have talked about this with like WPF or WinForms. Uh, the .NET 5 RC, which is the release candidate that has a Go Live license, that came out probably 10 days back. Uh, and, and this one is just a little behind that. But I mean, you can completely uh, be assured that we will fully support .NET 5. We work very closely with Microsoft. We try to get ahead of the curve. So everything will be fine uh, come .NET 5. So that's very exciting. Lots of improvements went into JustMock as well. Uh, with JustMock, it's not just about local development, right? You have to think about uh, what your team is involved in. Um, whatever be your uh, source, uh, source code repository, we want to work with it. 
And a lot of uh, folks end up using like a CI CD pipeline in, in this day and age. And code coverage is important, right? How much coverage do you have with your unit tests on the code? So you have that stability, that peace of mind to know what you're pushing out. Uh, so if you have .NET Core uh, applications that you're pushing out through Azure, we have worked a lot to create different types of pipelines. The Azure one is the most sophisticated one. You have full code coverage now with uh, with JustMock. We can pull reports out of the CI CD pipeline and the newest extensions in Visual Studio, it's already out. So if you have .NET Core uh, code that's out in the Azure pipelines, uh, it's going to turn up and uh, light up automatically within your pipelines. Uh, if you run multiple instances of Visual Studio, this is something um, uh, like I am on a Mac and I, I didn't have this uh, prior to a few releases back, but this gets a little tricky because you're now dealing with in-memory objects and the debug window that uh, JustMark deals with, it is smart to know what application you're running and what instances you're running. Uh, so between your unit tests that you're running and you're trying to check your coverage and all of the mocking objects that you have, there, there is no bleed over. So we are very conscious of multiple Visual Studio instances. There were uh, lots and lots of requests in the feedback portal on how to enable and disable uh, some of the debug window workflows, uh, and you had to go into your registry to do that. We have made that super easy. It's just a one right click from the VS extension itself, and you can enable and de uh, disable. The JustMark profiler is included, again, in the JustMark commercial NuGet package, so you get to throw this in, in whatever uh, CI CD pipeline that you have, right? So what I'm trying to say is, lots of love in, in, in JustMark. Uh, this is a solution that really gives you peace of mind when you're unit testing. So uh, please take a look at that. And in fact, today, um, uh, my good friend, Ed, Ed Charbonneau, uh, who runs our Blazor thing, he's gonna come and join me for the Twitch stream and uh, he's gonna show off some JustMark with Twitch. Now, last couple of things with productivity, I'm not gonna spend too much time, but Sacfinity. Uh, this is our CMS, but it's so much more than a CMS. It's really a digital experience platform. It lets you do a lot of things under the sun. You look at um, like million dollar businesses running their websites entirely on Sidefinity uh, because of the power uh, that Sidefinity can bring. It's multi-site, multi-channel, uh, really personalized um, and system integration uh, through whatever else you have running on your enterprise. And Sidefinity just came out with their 13.1 uh, Release, I think they have, may have had one more release after I took the screenshot. So again, lots and lots of love being poured into it. Uh, it's .NET Framework, .NET Core, uh, all new and latest and greatest things. And so take a look at Sidefinity if you want to run really heavy sites with a CMS that automates workflows for your developers as well as your end users. Okay, I am right at time, but before I hand it over, I have three minutes, right? So I'm gonna take every bit of that little time that I can have before I hand over. So let me show you something really quick. Hopefully you're still uh, seeing my desktop. So <clears throat> excuse me, this is reporting. And if I go to Teleric reporting, and if I uh, hit the big uh, launch the demos button, this is the page that I end up on. And what you see here is a bunch of reports that you get to play around with. Uh, you can see the type of things we uh, can enable. So you get to see some of the reporting components. And again, this is all powered by your data. You get to bring it in. You get these toolbars that are super nice to do all the functional things with your reports. Uh, we can do like a product catalog report where again, it's a report that lets you see a bunch of different things and you, can, you get to organize the repeatability of these components. Uh, what else, like the dashboard, this is kind of a classic dashboard thing report and think about your enterprise workflows and think about where reporting can automate things. And again, you can build these reports and deliver them uh, on the fly and as well as automatically. Now this is the web report designer. This is beautiful because this is for your end users who are not technical, but you wanna give them um, the uh, ability to be able to design their own reports. So if I can make this a little bigger, you're gonna see like all of the components, like this is the visual tree for the report, like all of the items, the tables, the maps, the charts and graphs, they're all right here, ready to be dragged and dropped. So it's right there. And when you look at the Explorer, like this is the entire visual tree. Like this is the detail panel, like that, that's the report header section, all of it is customizable. And this is the best part. When I go into the data sources here, um, you see this one is using uh, a SQL data source. Uh, that's, and now this is not magic. I mean, you can do this from within your ASP.NET application, ASP.NET Core application. And I can show you this uh, when you uh, come and join us for the Twitch streams. It's a RESTful service. You're not only exposing the 
report definition and the way the report engine renders the report, where you can also expose your data sources. And that's where some of the new wizards come in. We can um, kind of automate that workflow of how you set up the data source, be it a CSV, be it a JSON. Uh, so this one here, if I can just quickly show you, like that's the connection string. So this one in here is looking into some connection string, either on-premise or uh, in the cloud. And then um, I think this one here like has a SQL. So this is not magic. You're literally going to a SQL or some other data source and pulling the data out and you're letting the user have a data source and then build reports out of it, right? So all of that is right there. And um, uh, I have 30 minutes. Can I take one more minute from you, Peter and Andy? Then I can uh, really quickly show you something. Are there any questions, uh, Andy, that uh, you see for reporting that I can quickly answer? Yeah, there was one question about the REST, uh, what REST service, uh, if multiple users access it at the same time, will this cause the service to overflow or is the service configured to serve users asynchronously? No, it is completely asynchronous. And uh, like I said, I will uh, write a service live once we um, uh, head over to Twitch. But this is all ASP.NET, right? It's your service and you get to deploy it uh, however you want on a single server, on a multi-server farm. Uh, it's a restful service, so it is as scalable as your uh, hosting is. Yep. Uh, what I want to really quickly show you are two reports. And yes, the restful service will serve as many uh, users as you need them to uh, to serve. Uh, and it's really awesome. It just exposes the report definitions as well as uh, so much more about the report uh, engine doing its thing as well as the report designers. So I know I'm eating one more minute into your time, but let me show you real quick. Uh, I'm showing you two things here. First is the report designer, and I'm on Windows here. So you can see like this is the standalone designer. You can do this here, or you can do this in Visual Studio. Uh, I'm pulling up one quick uh, TRDP file, which is the report definition. And this is all powered by SQL Server and it's running the AdventureWorks uh, database uh, locally. So this is my SQL Server, that's my report. If I preview that, it's pulling data straight out of my database. That's my report, right? And I, I designed it um, locally. And then uh, just to kind of give you a quick idea, like this is uh, a solution that has the REST service. This one has the uh, ASP.NET, uh, this is a Blazor solution. So it has the REST service right here and the client is actually WebAssembly. So this is running entirely within WebAssembly. And if I can pull this up just one time real quick. So it runs local and then when you deploy it to the web or you deploy it to a WPF solution, uh, you can see a Blazor application come up. That's just a shell of a Blazor application. And you see the same report uh, come up for the web as well. So what I'm trying to show you is there's a lot of flexibility. There's a lot of love as to how you build your reports and you deliver them. Uh, and Teleric Reporting is right here to help you. Okay, I know I went uh, two minutes over, but let's stop here and um, let's have uh, Peter switch over to show you some testing. Thank you very much, uh, Sam. It's been a lovely presentation so far. Good evening, good morning, uh, good afternoon to everyone. And thank you one more time for joining uh, this webinar today. Uh, myself and my friend, colleague, and boss in this order of business, Andy, are going to present uh, for you Teleric Test Studio. We're going to do a quick uh, deep dive on the two, what its main features and capabilities are, and of course, go over the latest release uh, of it. I know we are a little bit short of time, so bear with us. We're just literally going to scratch the service. As uh, Sam said, uh, what we will follow afterwards is a Twitch session where you guys can um, check more of, uh, of the tools in question. With, uh, with that said, I'm going to pull the presentation on my screen and actually before we start um, I really wanted to have um, just a few seconds thinking and observing this uh, this white and uh, this sentence from the Garden of Magic Quadrant uh, 2020. It's not about Test Studio, it's about uh, automation uh, in general and uh, what it is. Uh, I really want you guys to, to think about it to think about um, automation testing the next time we have uh, the difficult and cumbersome uh, regressions that we need uh, to do, or uh, think about automation testing the next time we need to finish three iterations for the time of one iteration, or if our customer comes with uh, aggressive deadlines and uh, release schedules. 
for example. So I completely agree with that, that indeed, when you think of it, automation testing is evolving to a mentality of using the tools that work best for the team in general. All right, uh, starting with, uh, with that, so for the ones of you who are not familiar with Test Studio itself, this is the Leric solution for UI testing. And of course, this is the only official UI testing tool with support for the Leric offerings and the can do UI stack. As you can see, we've been on the market for quite uh, some time now. So we support uh, anything uh, from the forefathers. Yes, Superwide is still supported for UI automation testing, uh, including the guys since uh, ASP.NET time of uh, web forms or MVC passing through core on, um, on the web part. And of course, the new kids uh, on the block with uh, Angular, React, uh, Blazor, of course, with regards to desktop UI testing and uh, automation, we fully support uh, Microsoft uh, WPF. Right, so what is Test Studio in a nutshell? Here I have tried with this uh, little table to outline the main features of uh, the two. So it is codeless and or coded. Uh, if you are uh, comfortable working with C-sharp or uh, VB.net, uh, test solution with uh, via the standalone version of uh, Test Studio and or the Visual Studio plug-in that uh, we provide. Test Studio offers a full web uh, functional cross-browser UI automation. Just to make a little clarification, we don't work only with Telerik UI any single web app that is out there can be completely automated by the studio with regards to desktop uh, the studio offers uh, complete wpf automation with regards to responsive apps yep uh, we offer automation across all screen sizes and uh, devices. Actually, this is one of the latest features that uh, we have in our portfolio. And this is um, a big chunk of the demo, of the quick demo that we're going to do for you guys by the end of um, this, webinars. Uh, this webinar. We also include load and performance testing and uh, RESTful API and data-driven testing with this uh, regards all of us know especially now that we are talking about uh, agile and uh, logically automation that uh, ci and cd at the moment devops uh, if you call it play a big uh, a big part uh, in our daily job uh, test studio as a tool supports full and complete ci cd integration whether it's with uh, solutions and uh, software like azure devops or jenkins uh, through team city bamboo for example etc 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 which comes out of the box with a quick um, configuration and last but not least after you have created uh, your automated test you need to be able to schedule them either for local or for remote uh, execution via the the tool and as a last step you and um, the corresponding stakeholders from the management for example should be able to monitor and see the overall health and status of uh, your project which uh, can be done via our web-based uh, results and reports right uh, here's another slide that uh, summarizes the all-in-one ui automation testing tool and the features that uh, it uh, provides, as we already discussed, it is full record and playback automation, either by the point and click recorder, which um, I'm going to show you, or via complete uh, coded steps with C Sharp or VB.NET, if you are comfortable with, uh, with that. The idea behind all of this, by the way, is to create a quick and stable test and correspondingly quick and test uh, quick and stable sorry test runs afterwards and minimize the test maintenance 
I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys who are already doing some kind of uh, automation to a degree or so um, have encountered uh, a scenario where on the development uh, side during the, the corresponding cycle some element changes, right? You know that uh, pretty often this would result to your automated scripts failing and you know that it can be a pretty nasty situation. We're doing our best to minimize this kind of uh, test maintenance. So once you do a change, you can easily apply this change throughout your entire project so that uh, by the end of the day, you don't uh, give up and say, I don't have time to automate, right? The whole idea of automation is exactly, namely to spare and save you time with the proper tooling. Um, of course, just one uh, quick note with regards to the coding uh, capabilities of uh, Test Studio. You can uh, virtually reference um, any third party library, DLL, whatever you feel comfortable working with. Uh, <clears throat> if you prefer, excuse me. So, this was with regards to uh, Test Studio, the very quick overview that we managed to do in the five minutes or so. Now, since we are a release webinar, I would like to spend a few more minutes about um, the latest release highlights of um, Telerik Test Studio. As we already discussed, uh, we brought uh, to the world a new type of test that you can create within um, your project. It's called the responsive testing test type, which allows you to automate your application uh, covering different uh, form factors, meaning that uh, every single mobile screen is uh, that exists out there can uh, now be automated in a responsive uh, test. Along with that, uh, as of now, we already support uh, OCR, optical character recognition, validations and verifications, which you can include in your uh, different tests, both for web and desktop um, applications. And last but not least, uh, I can give you an example that, again, for the ones of you who are already practicing um, automation, uh, you guys know that um, how painful uh, the constant refresh or auto refresh of the DOM might be at uh, its moments that would uh, definitely, definitely, if not break, then make uh, the entire maintenance and creation of uh, your automated uh, test a little bit more difficult, right? That's why we have added an option to manually pause, resume, or refresh <clears throat> the DOM during the recording um, stage of uh, Test Studio. Right, so a few slides on uh, on those chunks uh, before we get to the actual uh, demonstration of uh, the tool. So responsive testing in the Test Studio Ultimate uh, Edition. No complicated configurations. This is the first thing. It means that literally, if you're familiar with the tool up until now, you can sit down, continue using it and get along with the new feature with a new test type as you were doing before, because it is the same look and feel and experience as if you were creating a web test. However, it is a different type of uh, test, which is responsive. You don't need to do any configurations outside of uh, Test Studio, meaning that you don't need to go to your browser, change the form factor, go to the console or do some additional and cumber some um, settings or configurations. We do everything uh, for you within the two. Test Studio is um, a tool for recording and execution out of the box, supports all of the major browsers that exist out there. But when we talk about the new feature, which is the responsive uh, test time, a uh, test type with the first release, we have introduced uh, and support recording and execution only on uh, Chromium Edge, and uh, Chromium. Those two, I may clearly say, the first two uh, currently most popular browsers, number one and number two. Uh, at the moment, you can record those tests 
in any screen size. This is something that you predefine from the project settings in uh, Test Studio. As uh, I said, no need to go out, out of the tool to do anything uh, in the browser. And you can later on add those new type of responsive tests into a functional test list. And what is uh, quickly a test list in Test Studio? This is your bucket. This is the container for all of your tests that allows you to schedule them for remote or uh, local execution. And this is the container that talks directly to your CI CD solution and allows you to utilize and trigger those, uh, those tests uh, anytime uh, you have an active and triggered uh, pipeline. For example, for your builds or releases, um, whatever. Right. This was with regards to responsive uh, testing. The next uh, big chunk and feature is optical character recognition features that uh, have been introduced in uh, Test Studio. As you know, this is the way, the means to extract some uh, data, all the data from an image, the OCR itself. Within Test Studio, uh, now with our latest release, you can use uh, fully OCR for several scenarios. Uh, the first most uh, straightforward scenario is to verify an image, right? If you have different logos, uh, static images, charts, etc., you can directly get all the data out of uh, them and use it in some more complex um, scenarios. Like it is used uh, in any of the supported browsers, as I mentioned uh, before, you can capture either the entire image or part of it and respectively extract either the entire information or just a part of it of this uh, image. And it works both on web, any web and um, desktop WPF um, applications. The next a little bit more complex scenario where you can use uh, OCR feature in Test Studio in Test Studio is to first extract the text from an image and then use it for some uh, complicated verification scenarios. What I can think of and actually what I can uh, what I have prepared um, for you guys is a quick uh, uh, demo is uh, a work item chart where you know, you have elements with dynamically loaded content and items which constantly refresh. And uh, there you can extract those uh, data in order to do some advanced uh, verifications rather than just do a comparison between screen captures, which is much more cumbersome and um, difficult. Plus you can um, easily verify the different axes of uh, such chart, the X or Y, the labels correspondingly Etc. 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 Right. Last but not least, you have the extract OCR steps in Test Studio. Uh, generally, there is a specific uh, step type which is called extraction, which exists in our tool, which allows you to create and use in project variables. Right. With the addition of uh, OCR, we fully support extraction steps <clears throat> as well, which means that you can extract a data uh, or part of data from an image and then use it as um, in different scenarios like uh, validation this of this data against a database uh, for examples thanks to those um, variables and uh, what i can think of actually this is with the help of our team here we we uh, created a quick uh, sample um, applications are kind of a saving uh, calculator where you would need uh, to always feed and let um, let you have the latest uh, information of some stocks or bitcoins or whatever you're interested to invest in and very quickly uh, get this data into your uh, calculator. Just giving you a very simple example as compared to the much more complicated scenarios like um, complete um, Salesforce or Tableau automation which um, we support out of the box right and to last uh, but not least uh, i would one more time uh, mention uh, the feature of uh, manual dom refresh which allows you at any point of time during the creation uh, of the recording of uh, your test to freeze uh, the dom or uh, unfreeze it 
on your uh, desire. Right, uh, how are we going with time? Uh, pretty tight uh, here. Before I hand over it uh, to Andy, just to spend a few, sec a few more seconds uh, on my favorite slides of them all every time I talk to customers or do presentations or webinars, indeed, with Tech Studio, literally everybody from the team has a seat on the Agile uh, DevOps table. Whether this is going to be the developers working with the Visual Studio plugins that allows you to do automation testing and help the, the QI business analysts and so on and so forth, stakeholders on the other end through the managers who over you the entire health of uh, the projects going through the ops guys the network it departments and by the way we were talking about feedware during this presentation feedware core as a library is included and actually is behind the, the hood of um, the studio as well all right good so uh it's a quick uh, demo time now my colleague andy can uh, switch sides and show you Test Studio Visual Studio plugin and how we can quickly create some uh, tests with that. Thank you, Peter. All right. Thanks for the presentation so far. So good, Sam and Peter, for bringing us through it. Uh, hopefully, you should see my screen at this point. Do? Okay, great. So, let me just give you a sneak peek. We have just a few minutes left. And again, another plug for the Twitch session. We'll definitely take you a lot further into Test Studio in the Twitch, uh, Twitch session and exercise a lot more. But I wanted to give you a quick look. This is what we refer to as Test Studio Dev Edition. Uh, it does come in the form of a couple templates that are installed into Visual Studio, um, both a C Sharp and a VB.NET template that you can use to create your test. Uh, inside of the Test Studio plugin here, the Visual Studio um, the, sorry, the Test Studio Dev Edition, as we like to call it. There is record and playback capabilities, as Peter uh, has mentioned. And uh, there's also the ability to um, convert even your tests that you're creating here, that you're recording to code, extending them further through code if you'd like to. You can code everything from scratch. So really going back to Peter's uh, mention of everybody has a seat at the table, you're also able to, with Test Studio, with both our standalone version and our dev edition version, really kind of move the, move the slider between technical or less technical testing, as code or uh, as code driven or as codeless as you'd like uh, with Test Studio. So let me quickly take you into uh, a test here. This is one that, as you can see, it's recorded uh, the navigate step, some text entry steps. Here, I've actually converted a step to code that we'll take a look at as well. Uh, but what's great about this is we've brought so many features to allow you to create and maintain these tests uh, that doesn't require code. Uh, so that's in the way of, for instance, data driving your test steps uh, with data that could be from a, a live database or um, Excel or CSV or XML. So all sorts of ways in which you can data drive. As you can see here, I was data driving a, an email address. Um, so easily you can change these settings, you can modify these settings, and you can really take the ownership of testing and share that across the organization here. This particular test I'll show you, our tests do record with a storyboard as well. Each step uh, that's recorded has uh, an image that's associated with that. That allows you to have a nice visual representation of the test. It can also be exported, and a lot of our customers like to use the storyboard actually to help them produce uh, documentation, user guide kind of documentation as well. So a kind of a nice thing that, that comes along with Test Studio. Uh, before I jump into test execution here, I'm just going to show you a couple things, uh, as Peter mentioned, kind of under the hood. Uh, you do have a lot of settings that you could modify for making sure you interact. For example, if you're working with your your JavaScript applications, you might be working uh, or needing to simulate real typing or simulate real clicking to interact with those JavaScript handlers that might be there. Uh, you can do that from a step level. You can do that from a project level. Uh, there's a lot of these settings here that just make the testing adaptable. And another thing to speak of, when Angular, uh, for instance, came out, a lot of testing frameworks struggled 
to keep up and to be able to work with it. In fact, many uh, frameworks were uh, potentially even dead in the water when that new te technology arrived. With Test Studio, all we need to do is actually add uh, some tags to our list here, for example, uh, ng model or ng data or aria label. Those are things that seem to be very heavily used in uh, in more of an Angular you know, or React kind of situation. You can easily add those. So for us, we didn't have to retool anything when those new technologies came out. All it was was a matter of adding tags to your find logic. Find logic is key with Test Studio if you compare it to other tools. There's a lot of path-based references or trying to locate elements like this button here with a path. And that just doesn't work with responsive design applications. It doesn't work when you want to move something around on your application and all of a sudden your tests break. So our approach with Test Studio is giving you a flexible find logic that you can customize and tailor to your applications. This means your elements are located by their properties and they can move, right? So something like this cancel button can be moved around and it will still be able to go locate that uh, consistently for you. Secondarily, we've added element images as well. So not only find logic, but also the combination of find logic to locate elements and image lo uh, element uh, identification too. So those two are working hand in hand. They can work as a backup and ultimately this will make your tests last longer. So even if a property of an element does change, an element image might still be able to uh, keep the test moving forward. Uh, and then another thing to show before we jump into some test uh, execution is the translators. So Test Studio is packed full of all of these uh, Telerik control translators that understand and know how to work with and automate things like you know, a Blazor grid, for example, or a Kendo Angular grid, or you know, drop downs and things like that. So these are here to make testing for Telerik applications even easier and really to guarantee that we are the solution, the testing solution that can work with these technologies right out of the box um, and, and can be done in a way that doesn't require uh, a lot of burden on the development team. In fact, this really empowers the non-technical users. Uh, we have, as Peter mentioned, everybody has a seat at the table, so we have both technical and, te and non-technical users of this product and if interfaces that match as well, a standalone environment that you'll see with, from Peter and myself here in the dev edition. So just to put this into uh, a record mode, I'll just use this run to here feature and it will allow me to choose which uh, browser I want to execute from. Uh, we'll go ahead and just execute here in Chromium Edge. And this is also going to put us into a live record mode. What I'll show you here in a moment, too, is this coded step. We basically built in a random email generator. So naturally, I recorded entering the email the first time. And then I wanted to add some code to this. So I, I created an email generator, uh, which basically puts in a random email address there for the login. Uh, so this just goes through a pretty quick uh, execution. And also, since I used the run to here feature, it has left me in a live record mode. So it's executed all 10 steps, all 10 of them have passed, and I'm now actually able to continue recording. As I just click away here, you'll see that it starts capturing things for me back here in the test, right? So it's very easy to create and modify and edit these tests, maintain them over the long run. Uh, as I mentioned, you can also convert test steps to code as I did here. I converted the step here to code, it's this data-driven email entry, and I'm actually leveraging this little string builder that I put in here as well that generates that, uh, that random email address. So something like that, very easy to do. Uh, in a, a typical scenario, we might have a non-technical user who maybe maintains and works with this test on a regular basis. And then when they need help from that developer, we can check into source control. We do integrate directly to uh, TFS, as well, um, TFS, which is also, of course, in the Azure family, so Azure DevOps, and Git as well. So I can simply check in my project. Uh, I can then swing it over to Peter. He can pick it up, and he can continue working with that project as well. Now, I know we're very short on time. Uh, we're just scratching the surface. Again, we certainly will invite you to come to the Twitch session and see more depth and let us take you through more of the feature set 
here in Test Studio. We can do some more live testing for you then. Yeah. Sam, I'll hand it back over to you. Yeah, thanks. Okay, you know, two things are standing out to me, <laughs> like as you folks walk through this, and, and uh, thank you for doing that. Number one, your shirts are awesome. Like, do you even test real? Well? How can you beat that? And then uh, the other thing that um, uh, Peter, you mentioned, like everybody has a seat at the table, and I think I'm I'm, I'm seeing this trend more and more, where uh, like we are all cogs in a wheel as we deliver software, right? So your business analysts, your QA people, your DevOps, they don't need to be like people that you just work with. They are all together in a team and uh, more and more developers are getting to uh, automate some of the configuration parts of it, some of the testing parts of it. So um, yeah, more tooling, more ammunition, the better. Uh, so we are almost at time, but I did want to take uh, time to uh, just answer like two or three quick questions here. Uh, I know they have been answered uh, already uh, by our folks, but I mean, they are relevant. So I'm just going to uh, uh, bring them out one more time. Um, Dennis Devevec was asking for the web report designer, which is the WYSIWYG editor for the web. Can I predefine the SQL data sources in the configuration and then hand it off so that the user is not, not doing it. Yes, yes, that's exactly the point. Um, so the data source is essentially a thing for us to expose through the REST service. So then the user gets to just use that uh, going forward. JSON or uh, web service, that's a little more flexible and you can let the user do it. Um, so yes. And um, Doug Baden asked a question, which I'm sure I'm opening up a can of worms here. Uh, and you might get a different answer based on who you ask and how uh, you want to be politically correct or not um, about SSRs, which is SQL Server Reporting Solutions. And you're not going to hear me say bad things about competition. So we want to stand um, by virtue of what we bring to the table. Uh, that's a whole different um, beast. I mean, you're talking about a server, hard server dependency as compared to Telerik reporting, which is an embedded solution that runs on .NET. You get to write your reports however you want, uh, desktop or web, and then render and deliver your reports however you want. What I will say is take a look at the flexibility we bring to the table in terms of connecting to just about any data source, the uh, conventional way in which we define our reports and the no code way in which you can build the reports uh, for your end users and deliver them. Uh, if you are using things like uh, crystal reports or active reports, we actually do have some converters that can bring them over. But otherwise, like choose the best tool uh, that work that works for you. Okay, and uh, I don't think uh, there are any uh, unanswered questions for uh, the test studio side of things. So um, I know we are over time, but let me uh, wrap things up real quick. Uh, once again, thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much uh, for spending an hour uh, with us. So we don't get to talk enough about reporting and just mock and productivity and testing during our release webinar. So this may be the one um, uh, kind of silver lining to us kind of slowing down and doing this over several days. So uh, from all three of us, uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your time. And like we have said multiple times, uh, come and join us on uh, on Twitch. That's going to happen uh, like half an hour from now. Uh, Andy and me are going to go ahead and quickly get some stuff. And then we're going to start uh, things in a reverse way. Andy's going to show Test Studio first, uh, Dev Edition. And then uh, my good friend Ed joins me for Just Mock with Laser. And then I talk about uh, reporting. So that's a two plus hour stream that's going to happen on twitch.tv forward slash coded live. So come and join us. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, as your time permits. And we would love to have you. And one more time, we are all living through difficult times. So we hope that you and your family are safe and you're being healthy and productive and happy. Uh, yeah, these uh, times will pass as well and we'll see better days. So yes, yeah, stay safe and stay healthy everyone and uh, have fun. Thank you again, once again, uh, from all of us uh, here at Progress and uh, we appreciate you and we'll see you on the next webinar or on the Twitch stream. All right, so bye-bye.